Hello, I'm Anne Krugel. Welcome to Landline and to Amarillo State Forest near Gympie for the 30th annual Music Muster, the biggest not-for-profit event of its kind in the country. And since it's Father's Day, a special welcome to all the dads out there. I hope you're having a great day with the family. Well, every year for the past three decades, some of the country's most popular and talented performers and their fans have made a beeline for this sprawling site for a week-long music festival. Here we go! As a fact of life, it's known that, and we all know that it's true. The colonel put the lincoln in the chicken, but who put the room in the stew? Who, who, who put the room in the stew? Here we go! Gympie's Webb Brothers allowed the local Apex Club to host the first muster on their property just outside of town. In 1984, there was a familiar lineup: Eric but Bogle, a youthful John Williamson, and one of our best ever bush bands, Bulamakanka. The muster was growing so fast it needed more space and eventually moved to the Amamore State Forest. The headline acts drew crowds from all over Australia and good causes as diverse as farm safety and the Leukaemia Foundation benefited greatly. He has seen a hundred musters, I think it's only fair. We leave him in the long yard here today. In 1993, John Farnham made a guest appearance. The charity that year was Drought Aid. In the middle of John's performance, it poured rain. Despite the occasional rain and despite some minor problems with an event which keeps growing beyond expectations, the National Country Music Muster is now firmly established as one of the most popular music events in Australia. With me now is Landline colleague Kerry Lonigan. Hello, Anne. Well, Kerry was the show's founding executive producer 21 years ago, and if you pardon the pun, he was instrumental in getting Landline first involved in the Muster's Rural Aid Appeal. Now, that was back in 1993. What was it like? Well, my attitude was that uh, too much country music is never enough. I was always a great fan of country music, and I liked the concept of this. Gympie uh, Community Club, uh, the Gympie Apex Club, and the fact that they were going to raise money for regional and rural Australia, and particularly one of the first years, it was a very, very bad drought year, and we thought it was a terrific idea. some big names that have actually had a hand in helping the drought break. Well, Johnny Farnham was terrific. He offered to come up here and sing. He was launching an album, and he came up here with a huge entourage. The entourage weren't much fun, but Johnny Farnham was absolutely terrific. He got on stage and he sang a song called When the Rain Tumbles Down. And he got out there on the stage and it absolutely poured in the middle of a drought. Well, everybody laughed. Farnham had a fantastic time. We had a good time. And it raised a huge amount of money. Well, good old Fonzie sounds like a true professional, and there have been some other big names as well here. All thorough professionals, Graham Connors, Casa Daly, Williamson, and who could forget the one and only Slim Dusty, one of his last appearances at his peak, memorable performance here at the uh, at the Gippy Muster. Oh, it's a lonesome way from your kindred and all by the campfire at night where the wild dingoes call. But there's a nothing so lonesome, all but all drear, than to stand in the bar of a pub with no beer. You've actually helped uh, been responsible for launching the careers of some budding musicians. Well, when we got involved with this and we got seriously involved in country music, we made a lot of clips for rising young stars. We made one of the first clips ever for Lee Koenig and a fantastic clip uh, called Boys from the Bush. The boys from the Bush and we're back in town. Well, the dog in the bag and the foot goes down. Well, I have members of the Outback Club. Well, the boys from the bush come in from the scrub. 
still talk about those film clips now and uh, a lot of people say bring them back but I think that's easier said than done. But you must get a very strong sense of um, just satisfaction knowing that you've been, as we said, instrumental in, in, in launching these careers. Well, can I just say, as you know, there's nothing like television to need a team and I had a great yep. team of people working for me yep. and still have and that are working with me and it's just uh, it is still it's evolving and it's still going on and we're still contributing we hope that's right all right well I think that's our wind up but thanks very much Kerry Muster regulars, this event is a chance to escape the rat race for a few days, camp out with family and friends and kick back in the bush. But there's more than just a few hardy souls for whom this annual pilgrimage stretches for weeks. Kieran McKechnie caught up with some of them. The Lorraine Waddington. It's a home away from home that's really not too far from her own. Every year for 12 years now, she and her husband, Len, have packed up their Gympie home and headed just down the road to set up camp at the Gympie Music Muster. We've been here about six to eight weeks now. Came here on the 1st of uh, July. <laughs> Last year we came here on the 21st of May. We were very keen. The lure of country music got them in at the start. Now it's the pre-muster activities with friends that keeps them coming back. Our bus is sort of equipped. We've got uh, karaoke and we've got videos and movies. We have a big screen that we set up just out there and, you know, we play all the country music videos and all that sort of thing. Yeah, everyone comes around and we sit around a fire and we have sing-alongs and that's the best part. Lorraine and Len Waddington count themselves as muster regulars, but they're certainly not veterans. That's a title reserved for those who've really put in the hard yards. 30 years, Danny. 30 years. Like Dan Rowland. You've had the first beer every muster out of this bar. Oh, bar yeah, open. yeah, they don't, they don't serve anyone now till I get that beer. Yeah. <laughs> He's been to every single muster since the festival began as a small community fundraiser back in 1982. First night out there I said, oh, this is going to be an annual bear. And he said, oh no, just a one-off. I was supposed to celebrate their 25 years of recording. And uh, you can see what's happened to it. It was an annual and 30 years later we're here. This year, Dan Rowland got here earlier than most. He's been camping for 11 weeks, waiting for the action. Love it, yeah. Yeah, that's what I say. People say, what do you do all day? I say, look up the road, but sometimes there's not enough hours in the day by the time we get a bit of wood and have a couple of beers and different jobs around the camp, and you might have a barbecue or a birthday, you know. It's not boring, I can tell you that. So I'll go to that top yeah. harmony and um, yeah, and you keep the root oh, note there, and it's so go again. It's not just the punters that keep coming back. The Gympie Muster is a must-attend event for country music stars like Luke Austin. As a professional musician, whether you're playing here or not, you have to come here to be inspired because there's just so much going on and you walk past one tent on the way to going to see something that you want to see and you hear something that's like you know grabs your ear and you're sort of like oh I might just go check that out next thing you know you're, you've missed where you want to be because it's just everywhere there's so much uh, talent um, and just great world-class acts you know all in the one place it's it's great it's it's heaven <laughs> he's been coming since he was a kid but even he admits the muster's not just about the music. And it's just like a big family, like you see in everyone at Christmas time. And uh, you can really get together and catch up with people that you don't generally get to see during the year, unless you're touring through their towns. And everyone's here, so it's, it's just, like I say, it's a great atmosphere. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't miss it for the world. 
Now, I've got to admit, I'm not Australia's greatest country and Western music fan, but there's something about the atmosphere here at the Gympie Muster. You just can't help but have a good time. You don't like the songs I play. Even for the dedicated country fans, it seems the music isn't the main draw card. Half the fun of the muster is the camp before. You know? This is a bonus over here, the music. It's, it's, it's the people that make it. It's, it's like everyone's just family. You see the relaxed atmosphere, I think, and the uh, campfires and the different types of music that you, you get here and the characters. Yeah, it's great. Just the, the people, the like-minded people and the, the music and, yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah. And of course the, uh, <laughs> the beverages. The beverages. That's it. Yeah. The atmosphere of the place is just, just sort of uh, addictive. One might say. You know, it just you've got to keep coming back. While Gympie is certainly Queensland's home of country music, it's got a long way to go to knock Tamworth off its perch as the national country music capital. But organisers reckon it's only a matter of time. Look, I think we can give Tamworth a bit of a run for their money in the coming years. So, I think we're I think we're on target to be a number one in Australia somewhere along the line in the future. But for Gympie Muster veterans, it's not about the prestige. Dan Rowland says he'll be back next year and the year after that. This place, he says, is in his blood. You know, the Army, Navy, and Air Force—they got the Air Force family, the Navy family, and. But it's the same here, you've got your muster family, you know, people you've known for years, you keep in touch with them.